respected counselors and dear students good evening and welcome to the teleconferencing sessions of school of agriculture today we will be taking the diploma in dairy technology program we have scheduled three sessions for today as you know the diploma in dairy technology program has eight courses milk production and quality of milk dairy equipment and utilities milk processing and packaging dairy products 1 2 3 quality assurance dairy management and entrepreneurship in last session we covered the basic production aspects of the milk how to go for the clean milk production today we will be taking the dairy development and cooperative system in this there are three units are there so we'll be discussing these three units before starting this i would like to give you some introduction about the agriculture livestock and dairy agriculture and dairy are integrated together agriculture accounts for around now it is 18.5% of our gdp and provides livelihood to about 52% of the country's population we all know that this growth rate is almost stagnant or it is decreasing for the last 5 years and this is the reason for one of the crises and you must be aware that the government of india has declared a special package of 25000 crore under which special schemes have been introduced and the objective is to have a desired growth rate of around 4% so this is the scenario of agriculture now with this in background let us see what is the scenario of livestock because agriculture and livestock are go together they are well integrated in an agriculture system you must be knowing that we have the largest livestock population in our country with 485 million in number the cattle population is 185.18 million we are ranked second in the world the buffalo population is 97.92 million in numbers and we rank first in this sheep population is 61.47 percent and we are third in the rank and the goat population is 124.36 million the poultry population is 489.01 so this is the the population scenario of our livestock this scenario is based on the 2003 census even the the census for the 18th is census it is going on now what is the contribution of livestock products as you know the milk production is around we say 100 million tons and it and the current figure for 2007 and 08 tentative figure it is being quoted as 120 102 million tons is there the per capita availability is 246 grams per day the population of the production of eggs is around 51 billion wool is around 45 million kg and meat is 2.3 million tons is there so this is the contribution of livestock is there the livestock as such it contributes to the 5.26% of the gdp 70% of the rural household own the livestock in our country the contribution of livestock towards the agriculture is around 31% 32% is there you can we can see the importance of livestock around 23.68 million population is engaged in the livestock activities and they constitute around 5.8% of the workforce like we said the 11th plan target for agriculture is 4% for livestock it is around 6 to 7% is there now see the what are the basic features of the animal husbandry and dairy department 
as we mentioned, they are integral part of the human life. The importance is very much because they play an important role in socio-economic development of rural areas. They provide gainful employment to the landless, small and marginal farmers and they contribute towards the sustainable agriculture. So this, this is the importance of animal husbandry and dairy. Now we'll see about the dairy particularly. India ranks first in the milk production with around 102 million tons. Out of this, unorganized sector is about 80% and the organized sector is about 20% with cooperative sector around 10% and private sector is around 10%. Both are maintaining around 10% each. The very good thing about the dairy sector is it has maintaining for last 5 to 6 years around 5% growth rate and it has acquired certain strengths and weaknesses. Let us see what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses is there. Strength, the dairy contributes about two-thirds of the total livestock contribution to the GDP. So you can see among the livestock, the dairy is the main contributor. Growth rate, as I mentioned, it is around 5.6%. Now this is the profession which is more labor intensive and provides supplementary income to the 60 to 70 percent million rural households. In our country, which is more of population is more and we need the more labor intensive work. So this is a good occupation. The other advantage is it utilizes the agriculture byproducts and crop residues. The weaknesses which we observe, the productivity is poor as compared to the hybrids and the developed countries. As I, and as I mentioned, organized sector only handles about the 20% of the marketable surplus in our country. Because of this, the quality of milk is not very good. And when we want to export our products, we are in the limitations is there. Now, students, you like to know what are the major states the major states in our country are Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. These are the major milk producing states and where the activities are going and all the products are also manufactured at these places only. As I was mentioning, just see the other contribution. We contribute about 15% of the total world milk country production and the milk is the form number one commodity and its output is around 191,000 crores. Okay. The share of dairy sector in the total agriculture output is nearly 16 percent is there and the total bovine population in 2003 you can see 8.2 million crossbred cows 27.6 million indigenous cow and 33 million buffaloes. These are the certain features of the dairy in our country. Now what is the production? The milk comes from the, from the cattle is around 41%, buffalo is 55% and from goats 4% is there. And the cattle feed production in organized sector is 3 million tons and from unorganic sector is almost 3 million tons is there. The number of dairy plants in our country is 748 with the capacity of 81.3 million liters per day. So this is the scenario of dairy in our country and as I mentioned today we have one experts from the Ministry of Agriculture Department of Animals, Bandry, Dairy and Fisheries Dr. Surinder Gupta we will be discussing all these things in detail with you. The main advantage of dairy farming is it gives the remunerative price to the milk producer. The disadvantage I was what I was telling you, it is still considered as a subsidy activity. No doubt it gives the cash money to the farmers, it provides them the fluidity, but it is still taken as a subsidy activity as far as 
it is concerned and now only in the 11th plan lot of focus is being given to the dairy farming. The farmers realize around 60 to 70 percent of the consumer price with this. Now this is very high if we compare it with the fruit and vegetables. What the price the consumer pay the farmers get around 20 to 30 percent of the cost. But milk is one such commodity where they get around 60 to 70 percent of the cost is there. So these are the certain strengths, advantages or what we call the weakness that it is the one number one product and export also is going high because of certain reasons we stopped the export but it has learned certain advantages as one of the agriculture product is there. Now as I mentioned today we will be taking the the course one the block one dairy development cooperative system and we'll be discussing in detail. As you know, this block has three units, dairy development in India, dairy cooperatives, government policies and incentives. So I'll be taking starting with the dairy development in India. This we have structured into three parts, dairy development, that is pre-independence, 1947 to 1970, 1970 onwards and then the present position of dairying in India. So what is the objectives of this is there that after reading this unit or listening to this, you will be able to state the history of dairy development in India. You will be able to indicate the various agencies which are in government agencies, international agencies which have contributed to the growth of dairying and investment in dairy what are the various government projects, what is the contribution of cooperatives, NDDB and operation flood and what is the present position of dairying in India is there. Now first I will start with the pre-independence. The history commences with the arrival of British troops. When the British troops arrived, they were, they didn't find the milk suitable according to their taste. So first thing, they established the military dairy farms and the Allahabad was the first place in 1891 was there. Then in 1920 the government created the for the post of imperial dairy expert so that he could guide the India for the growth of the dairy in India is there. 1922 and 23 diploma in dairy at Bangalore and Allahabad commenced and then this the Bangalore Institute was renamed as Imperial Dairy Institute in 1936. In 1936 also forms the year of Dr. N. C. Wright to come as expert and he gave the lot of independence the recommendations and for which forms the basis for the many of the things are there. Now this is about the pre-independence. We'll come to the independence that is 1947 to 1970. The three government projects which were there, Community Block Development Scheme, Key Village Scheme and Intensive Cattle Development Program, these were the three schemes which came into the picture. The Community Block Development Scheme, it was started in the 55 selected blocks of the country. Block has husbandry officer was appointed and the objective was to strengthen the animal husbandry program in the country. The development of cattle on scientific lines and disease control were the activities were there. The progress was not so satisfactory but still it made the, the, the pay for the, for the scientific dairying in the country. Then came the, in the first five year plan, the key village scheme. It was a comprehensive and integrated program of cattle improvement and the each key village was a compact unit of having 500 adult animals were there. Now the main, the technical program was designing a sound breeding policy, the establishment of AI centers and advising the cattle, cattle breeders to solve cattle breeding problem. This was the technical aspects of the thing. This was about the key village scheme. Then came the in the third five year plan, 
the intensive cattle development project. It commenced, it commenced in 1964. And in this also, the objective was to increase milk yield through intensive and integrated use of all required inputs were provided to them. And to cover one lakh cow buffaloes of breedable age, there was a central semen bank, four regional centers. So this was the development. And by 1992 and 93, this was operating in 124 districts. The project areas was there. Then some of the non-government organizations, mainly Gosadan scheme, it was to segregate old and inform unproductive animals. Goshalas and Pinjras, Pinjra poles were also established. And then one of the, the premier institutions for the research, education and extension, ICR is also there. Now ICR contribution goes very long way. Lord, all the academic institutions are affiliated with the ICR, Indian Council of Agriculture, involved in the education, research, and extension activities. In the milk, the National Dairy Research Institute is the apex institution with the head office at Karnal. It has the regional stations at Bangalore and Kalyani. The other institutions are Indian Veterinary Research Institute, Ijat Nagar, and with the regional stations at Kolkata, Bangalore, Bhopal, Palampur, and Jammu and Kashmir. Similarly, the other important institutions include Central Buffalo Research Institute at Hisar and National Bureau of Animal Genetics and Sources at Kanal. ICR has contributed a lot for the development of research, academic, and the extension activities is there. Now, some of the international organizations are like UNICEF, FAO, CARE, Oxfam, International Dairy Federation. These are the, some of the international organizations are there. And I think you can see in the block some briefs are given. Now we'll take the dairy development after 1970. Because significant the progress in our country in the dairy development took place after 1970. The main features which I am going to be covering will be Anand Pattern of Cooperatives, National Dairy Development Board, Operation Flood, and Technology Mission on Dairy Development is there. Now, Anand Pattern of Cooperative, this was started with the Kiria district in Anand. The, as we know, the private producers were exploiting the milk private vendors were exploiting the milk producers like they were giving them the low payment or defaulting payment, incorrect payment, and they were providing less incentive for the milk production was there. So at that time, the politicians who were there, they encouraged the farmers to go for the cooperative work. And that's why the Keria District Milk Producers Cooperative Union Limited at Anand, which is also named as Amul, came into existence. Now, this Anand pattern of cooperative has become very popular, and the growth of the complete dairy development is based on this. Now, what are the essential features? The basic unit is Village Milk Producers Cooperative Society. That is a, a formation of a, a society, a voluntary association of milk producers in village. They form a society. Then the farmers themselves, they manage their affair and they form a management committee to do all the activities is there. Activities mean it includes like collection of milk, testing for fat, then sell, forwarding this milk to the union, then providing the facilities to the farmers, like sale of cattle feed or AI facilities to them. So each society also provides AI and veterinary first aid to the farmers there. So the basic unit is formation of, at village level, milk producer cooperative society. The producers, they themselves form a society is there. 
and there what are the activities which are going on each milk producer milk is tested and they are being paid by the society and the payment is very quick as i mentioned in the dairy profession lot of fluidity is there the farmers get the money if it is a morning milk they will get the evening payment is made once they bring the milk in the evening and when it is in the evening milk they get the money in the morning is there so this is the one of the activities that they it collects the milk and it's forwarded to the to the union and it makes the payment to the farmers based on the quality so society will have the milk reception equipment simultaneously testing facilities so that the farmers could be paid money is there then the farmers are also paid the nutritionally balanced cattle feed because the cattle feed the feed contributes about 70% of the cost of the milk is because of the feed so if the feed is very cheap and quality you can get good quality of milk from the farmers and there the saving will be also to the farmers so whenever some farmers ask you for some advice and you want to reduce the cost component the see the the feed cost component is there now each of the union have normally has a cattle feed plant and through which it is being made available to the farmers the low cost feed is being available and the cattle feed is being given to the farmers at no cost no basis and today you can see the network we have around 1.2 lakhs dairy cooperative societies in our country and the spread is in around 265 districts in the country and they collect about 21 million liters of milk per day and they market about 18 million liters of milk per day so this is the strength of the cooperative is there as i mentioned the next tier we call the anand pattern of cooperative as a three tier structure is there the base structure is the cooperative society at the village level then at the district level we have the called the union milk producers union is there it is the union of the milk producer societies the union normally they own and operate a feeder balancing dairy they also have a cattle feed plant they also have facilities for production of semen and distribution and they have a network of the veterinarians who will be there there is a board of directors of the union these people are the 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 Uh, the management committee heads of the societies and they manage the activities through the professionals that is they will appointing the managing director and they will be running the show professionally union will also have a normally a powder plant in the this so that whatever the excess milk is there during the first season could be converted into milk powder or the water oil or whatever the conserved products could be there and then third tier of the structure is the unions come together to form a state level dairy federation is there that is known as dairy marketing federation is there we have around 170 milk producers cooperative unions and we have 23 state cooperative milk marketing federations some of the very good with the brand names like in gujarat amul brand name is there for andhra pradesh state state milk marketing federation vijay is the brand name so these are the thing similarly punjab dairy development federation verka product rajasthan cooperative milk marketing federation is the saras is there similarly for the karnataka and milma kerala is there and for kolhapur the gokul so these are the different milk marketing federations in the country are there now the nddb was the main instrument for creation of the network into the our structure it genesis came in 1964 when late prime minister shri lal bahadur shastri ji wanted that the there should be body to replicate anand pattern of 
dairy cooperative in the country. So the NDDB came as it's under Society Registration Act in 1965 and the objectives, they are out outlined in our blog. The objective was to promote projects of general public utility relating to dairy, animal husbandry, food and agriculture, fisheries and cold storage. To prepare the projects and then to take the undertake research also in the in this thing. But one of the success story of the NDDB is Operation Flood program and now it has extended into like oil and other areas also. So as you are mentioning, Operation Flood program is the, the main, the what we can say the focus which changed the, the scenario of dairy in our country. It commenced in July 1970. What was the objective was, we call it as a phase one, was to create virtual flood of rurally produced milk in the country and lay a foundation for modernizing India's dairy industry. The project was for basically five years, but somehow it got extended up to March 1981. So we can, we can say that the operational flood one was in operation from July 70 to March 1981. The phase two, it commenced in October 79 and it was terminated in March 1985. The objective was to lay the foundation on the phase one. And then the phase three was from April 1985 to March 1996. The objective was to consolidate the developments which took place. And the post-operational operation phase was 1962 March 2002. So if you see the block in the end, we have given the summary of all the achievements, targets, of all these things in a tabular form, which gives the beautiful summary of this. But I'll give the salient features. Operational flood one, we got the, so much of the 1,26,000 of the skim milk order, 42,000 tons of the butter oil. It came under the World Food Program, a part of FAO. The total project amount was 95.4 crores, but it was revised to 106.54 crores. The objective was to collect the milk from the rural areas and to create the flood of the milk into India's four metropolitan cities like Bombay, Calcutta, Delhi and Madras. That's why the word Mother Dairy came in these four places. So the milk will be collected from the rural areas and the Mother Dairy, we will be collecting the milk and they will be supplying the milk to the all these more four metropolitan cities. So the basic objectives was expansion of city dairies, new dairies in four main metro cities, then storage and long distance transportation, rural dairy processing, and one of the objective was that the, the dairy cattle should be kept in the rural areas because at the village, at the urban areas, their maintenance is not proper. And then the, the urban people, the contractors or the middlemen, used to even kill the, the animals after two to three s sessions. So these were the objectives were there. The milk production enhancement inputs, improved in the milk animals, organization of rural procurement. So these are the certain goals which were kept into the mind. Operational flood two, in this the, the distant features was, it was part of the sixth plan, the commodities were directly received from the donors and the outlay was 273 crores and the milk shed covers were 136 were there. The operational flood 3, the total outlay was 1300 crores approximately in which we got some aid but NDDB also contributed, the government of India also covered. The milk shed covered were around 170. And one of the new things which was introduced was creation of national milk credit. That was balancing the seasonal fluctuations. As we know, the ratio between the flush season and seasonal is around sometimes 50% is there. So how to balance those fluctuations, this is there. So now 170 milk sheds in 265 districts, this was the end. And the milk distribution was being done into 770 eight cities. 
so what we can see the major achievements of this was that this was a program which were vertically integrated from the producer to the consumer and to eliminate the middleman as far as possible the man behind the white the operational flood or white revolution what we call is dr vargis kurian who was the md for the nddb and we also call him as the for for the operational flood success for the operational flood program is there the main feature is this that the cooperatives were the catalyst for transforming the milk from the into a leading milk producer and dairying became an economic core economic activity in the country is there and as i mentioned today now the network is around 13 million farmers members are the are the members of the cooperative societies you can see the number of cooperative societies around 1 lakh 22534 and these societies are grouped into 170 unions covering around 265 districts and we have 23 state level marketing foundations are there the next came that technology mission on dairy development it was from the 1988 to 1997 the objective was to support and supplement the efforts of operation flood program in the country and dairy development on cooperative lines should be there and all the activities of the state government anniversary irdp different activities could be dovetailed so that the the synergistic effect could be felt on to this is there now what is the present position as we all know that from the 17 billion tons from 1951 to we have now 102 million tons the per capita availability has also increased from 125 grams to 246 import of milk powder has been stopped and we are exporting this export has been slight banned for time being because of the shortage of the the milk is the price the reason the farmers were not getting the remunerative price or the shortage of the milk were there now what is the future plan we are thought of that in 2011 there will be around 120 million tons of the milk and 21 22 180 million tons will be there now to achieve this what we have to do is at present our growth rate is around 2.5 million tons of the milk per annually so this has to substantially increase almost double 5 million tons the marketable surplus has to go from 30% at the organized level to 66% and we are expecting around marketable surplus of 100 million tons will be there there is a national livestock policy which is awaiting for the government approvals similarly ndb has also created a national dairy plan Uh, which they are expecting around 70000 crores for three plan periods is there so this is in the bro in a brief about the uh, the future the more details will be as i mentioned by one of our experts who has come from the ministry of agriculture department of dairy animals bending and dairy and fisheries now i will touch briefly about the dairy cooperatives as you know this is the unit number 2 so this unit covers the small history and principles of the cooperation it again gives the anand pattern of cooperative in detail it also gives you that how the cooperative structures are formed what is the three tier structure of the anand cooperative pattern what is the role of milk federations what is the objective of national milk grid so after reading this this unit you will come to know everything about the cooperatives now let us see what is the advantage of cooperatives what is the cooperative means it means to work together act together to achieve some common goal and the main advantage is it is to prevent exploitation of the poor as i was mentioning the farmers were being exploited by the middleman they never used to get the good money for their milk simultaneously they were not assured of the milk during the surplus season during the flush season and they used to be exploited so this is to promote people initiative mutual interest and self help it also ensures the proper uses of resources 
that is human, material and financial and it forms an effective link between the producers and consumers. So these are the advantages of this there. More advantages in also include like the consumers will get the, the quality product at a low cost. The profit of middleman which is normally around 20 to 30 percent is eliminated. So you can see one of the reason why the milk prices have not changed so significantly even though the other things have changed the price of other things because there is a direct link between the producers and farmers under the cooperative systems. Then the resources are pooled together and many of the inputs which are required to the farmers could be given to them at the low cost. Like I mentioned cattle feed, veterinary services, first aid could be given to the members at the lower cost is there. Now how does it operate? The cooperatives, cooperatives, they operate on the four principles. That is, they are open, transparent and they should be voluntary membership. It should not be forced. Democratic in governance, limited returns on equity, the money will be used for the expanding the activities, equitable distribution of surplus is there. And there is an act is there, Indian Cooperative Society Act, Central Act, but then the state governments also operate at their own level. What are the operating principles are there? If you want to register a society, in each state there is a registrar of cooperative societies there and we have to go to him. The registrar is supposed to be the supervisor for the society and our returns for the society are to be filed with the registrar. Now he can order an inquiry or inspection against society. He can also order the dissolution of society if 75% of the members ask him that this society needs, uh, I mean say dissolution is required. Now who can form the society? Next question is, we need minimum 10 members to form a society and their age should be above 18 years. And there are clauses so that the rich people could not overtake the society. There is a restriction on society with limited liability. That is, they can only have one person can have only 20% of the share, R rupees 1000 value is there. And each member has one vote irrespective of the amount it has contributed to it. Then the companies act are not applicable to this as they are. Then how do we manage the society? As you mentioned, within the, the members, they form a management committee. And the management committee includes chairman, secretary, treasurer, members of the committee. So is there. As I mentioned, if the mem members want, 75% of the members may cancel the restriction of the society. This committee does the management, does the routine work of the society. What type of, any type of society is there? If like in our case, milk is the milk procurement, milk collection, it's forwarding it to union, payment to the farmers, assuring the inputs to the farmer. So these are the activities are there. So like cooperative movement in India, Anand pattern of cooperative is one of the successful examples. It has a three tier structure of dairy cooperatives. Then what are the milk federations and milk grid? These are the essential points which we must read very careful. As I mentioned, Anand pattern of cooperative, the genesis was Keria district and where the objective was the milk vendors could not exploit the producers. The Amul is the brand name which is being used, is there. And the objective is production, procurement, processing, marketing and distribution of milk and milk products. It is owned by the milk producing farmers and normally the, the Anand pattern has a three tier structure of dairy cooperatives. As I mentioned, at village level we have a union, at the village level we have a society, at district level we have a union and at state level we have a dairy Federation is there. Now why this became very successful? Because it was commodating on a, focusing on a single commodity was there. There was a decentralized decision process was there. Then accountability of 
of these was given to the professionals for there. Regular audit was there. So these are the pattern is there. I have already explained the purpose of primary milk cooperative societies that they will collect the milk, give the milk payment to the farmers and they also provide the veterinary and first aid to the farmers will be there. Similarly, the work of union I have explained that they will supervise the work of the societies. They will be processing of milk and milk products. They will be marketing of their milk in their area operation. Simultaneously, in the, with the help of the federation, they will be deciding the product mix and sending the milk. They will have the cattle feed plant and they will also take the extension activities. And the dairy federation, they will be doing the marketing, the coordination of the bulk purchase, training, assisting the unions and the production planning also for the complete state level will be there. Simultaneously, there came the, the fourth tier, National Cooperative Dairy Federation that is linking the dairy cooperatives, federations together so that they can give the quality products to the consumers. There is no competition among the cooperatives and all can work together for the growth of the milk production into country. And they liaison with the NDDB and NMG. That is the one of the objectives that to create a national milk grid. The national milk grid, it takes care of the surpluses and the, of, uh, the shortages during the lean and flood season, during the deficient areas is there. So this is the one of the objectives to create national milk grid is there. So this is in short about the the past of the, the hist history and then the cooperative structure. The government policies and incentives as I mentioned, we have one expert from the ministry, so he will be taking in detail about this thing. So I, I conclude this session with the, in which we have covered the history part, the cooperative structure and particularly the characteristics of an pattern of cooperative, which is a three tiered structure. At the village level, we have a society. Then at the union, district level, we have a union. And state level, we have a federation is there. And for the, together, we have a national cooperative milk federation, where the, all the state federations come together and try to create a national milk grid, so that the, throughout the country, the off-season fluctuations our surpluses could be balanced in a very good manner. So friends, these are the, in a short about the, the unit one and two. My request is to please stay with us because we will be covering the government schemes and interventions and we have a gentleman who is directly coming from the ministry to deal the subject. And if you have the questions in the beginning of the session, you can ask me or after the second session, you can ask the questions. So with this, I conclude this session on the history and about the cooperatives. And we, I request you to attend the, this next session, which will start at 6 p.m. on the government policies and incentives. Thank you very much.